This is uh, this is a really clean toilet. Much better than the Russian ones. Lovely clean sink. Shaver. And I do need a shave. Ironically, the Mongolian to Beijing train is more western than any of the Russian trains. Because if you remember, you can actually squat on a Russian train toilet. You can just make out in the distance wind farms. That makes me really happy for Mongolia. This is the place to be, I guess. We're actually at a stop somewhere near the Chinese border, only for 10 minutes. Uh, we're on a Mongolian train, if it's not clear now. It's a little bit different to the Russian trains, and it's a little bit different in many great ways. One of them is that the staff actually smile, even though they speak even less English than the Russian uh, train members of staff. The toilets are much better. There's even a shower behind here but we can't use it because there's no hot water. Have they ever heard of cold showers? I guess not. But we can use the sink anyway. Free water. <sighs> Take three. Sorry. Now you get to see the behind the scenes. <sighs> and importantly for me, there's AC. Alternating current in the actual cabin. I haven't had alternating current in my cabin since I left Moscow. The corridors are wider. Gotta feel sorry for the people in first class though. Because they've got nobody to talk to. And I think part of the experience is about meeting new people. Unless they're on a regular travel related, business related journey. So they don't really, they don't really care so much about uh, interacting with uh, new people who might be traveling from all over the world on the uh, Trans-Siberian to China rail line. There's luggage space if you're like Raya and you need the space. We're currently at Sane's Hand here. We're just about to leave. We've been here for like 20 minutes just to get everybody a chance to stretch their legs and get some refreshments. Uh, if we look further down the planner though, we will be at the last Mongolian station for four and a half hours. It's border control. It's an odd time to, to be checking passports and under beds isn't it what they'll be doing in the dead of night is literally looking under my bed so i want to sleep that's a bit of a bummer anyway we arrive into beijing at 20 to 12. this train also has a dining car look how big it is i don't have any money so i'm just sat here with the menu you know what's also really good about this leg of the journey for some reason my mongolian sim actually almost grants me constant 3G access while on the train. That's amazing. Look, why? Why do I have 3G access? Not even trees anymore. Check it out. Clouds. Go, Scorpio. Costa. Oh, Nimbo Cumulus. <laughs> Nimbo Cumulus? Paula, the first time while I've been in uh, Mongolia. But the landscape is so barren. There is actually a lot of variety in what you can see. You have mist. If you're into minimalist photography, you can't go wrong on the uh, Mongolia to China part of the line, the rail line. I got some great pictures of sky and plane. Anyway, this is the last stop on the Mongolian uh, part of the line, and we're just currently getting our passports uh, checked again. I wish there was a process where you could pay like a fee, and let's say you do it through Real Russia, the agency that I went through, 
you pay a fee and for all of the three countries or any of the countries that you you, you travel through you pay a fee so that you can have like a simplified sort of border crossing uh, process but then how would you do that if everyone else hasn't paid on the train but I wish there was a process you could pay pay for to speed things up and just get just get through it because it's a bit what's the word it feels a bit redundant after this we will go a couple of kilometers and then hit the first train station on the bay on the China side and then go through the whole process again and for this and for that part of the journey it will start at nine o'clock at night and then we can leave that station at 1 30 in the morning so hopefully they leave us alone because I would like some sleep it's very antisocial you sit out there just 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 point there's no customer service skills We arrived just before 7 and it's now 7.30 and we're still waiting for our passports that have been taken from us and all they've done so far. All they've got to do is check them. But we've, uh, we've been moved backwards and forwards on various rail lines to prep us to get onto the Chinese rail. It's 8.15 and we're still here. <laughs> it is 10 to 8 and we are finally moving. Yeah. Oh yeah, but importantly though, we're now in China. It's now 9.18 at night and we're getting our passports checked by, uh, by uh, the Chinese officers. And so far, they are the most polite customs officers I've come across yes. in these five countries. And it's now so nice to hear Mandarin again. I'm getting closer to home. Home. Plus, if I Jackie Chan it, they'll, 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 they might get the joke. It is 10.25 and we're actually moving backwards. I think they're changing our engine. Oh yeah, and they turned the lights off and locked the toilets. Told us not to use the sinks. There's no electricity on the train. Pleasant experience. It's 10.33 and i am gonna go to sleep see what happens if i can go to sleep we're in some kind of depot for some reason <laughs> yeah it's 11 23 i just got my passport it's 6 20 and we're somewhere else in china traveling faster inside China than any other country that I've ever ridden the train on. I wonder what they are. Within a short space of time, go from the Mongolian plains to this to this train that's blocking my view 
Fairfax train. And of course, with China being a huge ass country, they have huge ass trains. There we go. What a contrast. I have a great idea. Why don't we just build a huge funnel and just throw shit into the air and then we get to breathe it? We've thought of that as a means to produce energy. What's a twat? Probably some white guy. Mm. Those over there are solar panels on the mountainside. That is pretty nifty. I was just giving China some stick because of that power station we, we uh, went past. China for sure has the most interesting landscapes to look at. Solar panels on these buildings here. And uh, they don't look like, they look like abandoned. So for those that know me in, uh, for those, for those that know I live in Hong Kong, this reminds me of the New Territories, just outside the major city. It's not too dissimilar. Can you see the distance? There's loads of wind farms here. And you know that makes me really happy because I've actually only seen wind farms in the UK and in Germany during this entire trip. And now I get to see them in China. There's supposed to be a Chinese dining car and I've just found it. Is it good? Yeah. Yeah? Thank you. Here it is. In the night, they switched all our cars around and there was a Mongolian dining car at the back. And now we've got a Chinese one at the front. But I don't think to do Apple Pay, so I've got no money. So she gave me this for nothing. Oh. I have a little trick. Have a trick. A trick. Wow. <laughs> nice trick. Grab them while you can in Chinese shops. <laughs> While I'm traveling, obviously I get to meet loads of different people. I met my first Uzbekistani while I was in Russia, and today I've met my first uh, Mulvanian. Um, but first, um, to explain who you are, what do you do? Well, um, I come from Mulvania. Uh, I travel by train across Central Asia, Russia, Mongolia, and China. Right. You said and you do that often. Yeah, I travel quite a lot. Okay. Maybe five, six, seven months a year. Okay, and why do you travel? Why do you travel so often? Yeah, the world is so interesting, so fascinating. So I love traveling. Okay, and what do you do? Uh, well, I I do different jobs. You know, I go to Mulvania to work a little and save money and travel again. Okay, so you use Mulvania as like a home base? Yeah, it is home base. Yeah, yeah, where I come from. Right. Okay. Yeah. And what's Mulvania like this time of the year? It's a small. Well, it is still warm. Okay. You may have severe winters, but at the time it's still warm. Pretty warm. Yeah. About 30 centigrade. Okay. And where is Mulvania? It's between Switzerland and Kazakhstan. Right. Okay. Yeah. It's a small country. Sure. Yeah. It was controlled by Switzerland for a long time, but they say Switzerland and, and Kazakhstan. Okay. Is it like close country? We met uh, on the train from Ulan Bator to uh, Beijing. And Mongolia has like one major city. Is Mulvania, Mul Mulvania? Sorry, how do you say it? Mulvania. Mulvania. It comes. The name comes from Mulva, which is the apricot. Oh, okay. In the local language. It's, but is Mulva Mulvania like a, a country of like one major city as well? Uh, yes, Lutenblak is the capital. Lutenblak. Lutenblak. Yeah. Okay. It's the capital city. But as I say, it, it's a small country. Okay. And what's what's? Uh... It's the site of Liechtenstein. Okay, I know Liechtenstein. And what's it famous for? Uh, apricots, 
well, the initial dish is, is fish and apricots. Okay, what kind of taste? Uh, Swedish, a bit sweet. Okay. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. It's, most people like it. Okay. Okay. And uh, how can you get like a direct flight to Albania? Uh, well, not really. You have to fly either to Switzerland or Liechtenstein and then go by land. Okay. There's there's no big airport. Okay. What about there's a small uh, airstrip where you can land if you have your own plane, of course, or helicopter. But otherwise, there are no international flights to Mumbai. No international flights. No international wow, flights okay. to Mumbai. That's strange in such a connected world. Well, but you know, it's a landlocked country. Um, oh, sorry, someone just walked past. Yeah. You know, it's a landlocked country, very tiny, so there's not much space for for you know, international airport. But people are contemplating to have an inter big international airport, which would compete perhaps with Frankfurt Airport. Okay. Um, if people want to Google uh, Mulvania, uh, how do you spell it? M O L V A N I A. And what does the flag look like? Just so uh, it's got a blue, visual reference. Blue uh, with fish, uh, and below we have an um, apricot. Wow! Because you know people love the dish. It's a sure. national dish. I've never seen a flag with, with fruits and food on it before. Yeah, well, so this is you know this is this is what makes Mulvania unique. <laughs> Check it out. Thank you Thank for your you. time. It's nice to meet somebody from another country you've never um, uh, seen before. We're about 10 minutes away from arriving at Beijing railway station. And yes, that is smog. Welcome home, Jonathan. Here we are. Uh, one of, I'm sure, many Beijing railway stations here. <laughs> I'm not surprised by that. We're currently trying to figure out a way of getting out of this, off this platform because all the exits seem closed. It's mask time in Beijing. And what do we see first when we get off the platform? McDonald's. Why am I not surprised? Um... 